I'm Merlin D'Souza and you're watching me on Talkative Tidbits. Well, the piano is definitely right now an intrins intrinsic part of Indian music, but uh, in the days gone by, well, in, well, Indian music was more into Indian classical, South Indian folk or Bollywood. In the years gone by, the, the instrument was not really known until, you know, the British Raj and the Portuguese Raj came in and then they introduced us to instruments like this. And s slowly but surely, this started taking a foreground purpose into all the genres of music. Because in the Hindustani and Indian music is so melodic, and there's no harmony in it, this is definitely important and it's now here to stay. Yes. Well, the challenges that one faces as a solo pianist at, at a live co concert is, number one, you have to enthrall the audience alone with this seven and a half to eight octave piano. And... Uh, so the thing is with the piano, you know, you have, it can play four part harmonies. You can play the bass, you can play the tenor, you can play the alto and you can play the soprano. So it's important for a pianist to bring out all these elements in a concert and enthrall the audience, keep the audience gripped. With classical music, it's not such a challenge because great composers like, you know, Mozart and Beethoven and Rachmaninoff had sections properly written for the piano. So they went through movements. If they were talking about a war, or about peace, or about romance, you could feel it through, right? Whereas with the pop or other genres of music, it's slightly as a challenge because you have to keep gripping the audience. That's the challenge. But if you're playing with the band, number two, the, the other point of the challenge for pianists is you tend to get drowned by the guitars and you know, all of that. So monitoring, that's a, that's a real challenge. Then you tend to bang and play. So that's a challenge to know that your, you've got proper monitoring for your sound when you're on stage. Uh, for me, the greatest challenge at a live show is, uh, well, I can't hear myself because these rock star guitarists, they are overtaking, you know, they are, they're kind of they're swashbuckling act and all, stuff like that. And here I am stuck at the piano and just with my back to the audience. So uh, the challenge is to uh, not overplay, but stick to your playing and hoping that the sound out there will give you the right balance of your instrument. You know, you're right, because as a vocalist, your vocalist is always up there, right? And if you're with a vocalist, you tend to be relegated to the back as an accompanist. Guitarist, well, he's just got this thing on his arm. I can't carry this piano, right? But he can carry his guitar around his shoulder. And so he's there up there doing his main act and giving you all those fabulous famous licks, you know. And um, so as a pianist, we do tend to stay in the background, but not so anymore. Because uh, if you're very good at your craft, you're good at and how passionate you are, you will never be in the background. You'll always be in the foreground. So pianists out there, make yourself felt. Uh, well, composing music for theatre and composing music for films, well, I love both. But there is a kind of difference. I've grown up, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a child listening to theatre. My first musical was when I was 17 and 18, I composed my first musical. And because there's a story to tell, it's such a short time, right? You get just one chance. The actors are, there are fewer actors as opposed to a film screen. It's moving, they're moving shots, there's color, there's, it's far more entertaining by way of visual appeal. The audiovisual is different. The audiovisual in a theater is definitely, definitely different. So the sound of minimal, minimalism kind of tends to enter composing music for theater. And where, whereas for a film, you, I mean, you can be, you, you can be an orchestra, you could be, um, you know, just have rhythm sections, you can have sound effects and all of that. So there is a, a, a kind of marked difference. But musically, as a composer, for myself, um, 
I don't find too much of a difference because I know exactly what needs to be given for theatre and what needs to be added for a film. Yeah, as of right now, I think there are the balance of male to female, the ratio is a little skewed, I would say. But it's also all thanks to and no thanks to with the way we are brought up in this, you know, in our culture uh, where, you know, the girls, they can study a little bit, maybe vocal training, you know, Indian classical music was relegated more to the female courtesans, you know, just singing. Um, and the, the men would be out late at nights you know, doing their stuff for the Maharajas and for, you know, for, for the folk festivals. Bit by bit, I think now parents are also teaching their girl children instruments like the sitar and the tabla and the piano and the harmonium because these are more harmonic instruments. And as a composer, you need to have a harmonic instrument under your hands. Vocally too, yes, I'm not saying you cannot be a composer if you're not a vocalist. But if you have something, if you're armed with something like this, or, you, or you're or with someone who's also another instrumentalist, it makes it easier to become a composer. And yes, people like, you know, Shubha Mudgal, Rekha and Bharat Raj, they're all amazing, you know. They're coming out and making their songs felt. And um, yes, so I would say that the ratio is slowly changing it's lifting it's coming coming up like this but not enough so i i as a music female composer i i feel heartened if i would see more female musicians out there and composers lots of uh, important pianists i mean if i had to name a few pianists some of my favorite uh, impressionable was definitely for me joe sample uh, then there was, of course, there's Chick Corea, who's amazing. There is Dave Brubeck and one of the contemporary pianists who I sincerely, sincerely like is Dave Grusin, also amazing pianist at Ahmad Jamal. And definitely in the country, we have a host of pianists, the premier being Louis Banks, definitely. Number one. Keep practicing because the piano is the mother of all instruments. Okay, and I think pianists out there are really lucky to have learned the or be learning the the instrument because with this you can score for films, for advertising, sonic branding. Because that's what I do, right? And at the touch of a piano, of a chord, you know, it's it's amazing what you can give to your producer, to your film director, to your producer, right? right? Because these are, these are kinds of people who will come out there and will, will see the way you're playing, number one. So it's your technique. Number two, learn new genres of music. Don't just stick to classical music or to pop or to jazz. Learn it all. Be greedy. Have a functional knowledge of all the genres. It's really important. And number three, definitely make yourself felt. Film yourself, shoot yourself, put out videos of yourself so that people know the piano is a really instrument to be taken seriously, right? So don't give up on the piano, keep playing at it and make yourself felt. <laughs>